Hello and welcome to the Art of Communication podcast, where we talk about everything to do with communication, both in our personal and our business lives. You're welcome to contact us at robinkermode.com. Hello everybody, it's Jan Hansen here, as ever, with Robin Kermode. Hello. Video has become part of our lives. It's Mm -hmm. something that almost in every role now, you might be asked to make a video or you might want to make them for yourself. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, whether it's business or personal or social media or whatever it is. And do you get a lot of people asking you for help now? Certainly in business, obviously, which is where most of my work comes from, whether you're leading a team or whether you're leading a company, you might want to give people updates, you might want to motivate the team, you might want to give a seasonal message. It's how we do that in a natural way. Tell me, you when the clients are asking, I'm just curious, right? Mm. Do you find most are nervous about making a video? Or are there some pros that are just really used to it? There are some pros who think, well, I'm good at public speaking. So there's that. Yeah. And then I think some people feel, well, I've done so much Zooming and so much Teams online meetings that I think, well, what's the difference now? Yeah, well, it's quite different. People are comfortable in front of a camera now because it happens all the time. Yeah. Are you? Oh, God. Well, uh, Sometimes I look at myself and I think, oh, no. But what we're talking about here is we're talking about making a video. Yes. And we can talk about the technical side. We'll do a tiny bit of that. But mm-hmm. that's not really what this podcast is about. What you're, I think interested in sharing with your clients and what they're asking you to share is how they come across really well on video as totally authentic. Is that what we're aiming at? Yes, I think you're absolutely right. It's the authenticity bit. It's very easy to go formal, super easy to go formal. We want to find a way of being really clear. We want to do it in a way that's very conversational. It's a tricky area to get right, actually, that. Yeah. Okay, the first thing I wanted to say is let's just get the technical side of it. What advice can you give us on the quality of the image? Well, the two basics about all filming, as you know, is lighting and sound. If you're lit well, then the camera can focus well and the image will be nice and sharp. If you're in dull lighting, we've all done Zoom calls in hotel bedrooms and things where the lighting isn't great late at night. And then we look so grainy because there just isn't enough light. Mm. So I think having really good lighting is good. And underlighting, of course, is much more flattering. Oh, is it? And when you get to my great age, you really want to underlight because you you want to (laughs) knock a few years off. Mm, The other thing is getting the sound right. If the sound, even though the video might be watching on a small phone, if the sound is clear, weirdly, you can see the picture better. Oh, yeah. Fair. And it's a bit like in the old days of television comedy. If you want to get a big laugh from an audience in a comedy, you have to light them slightly brighter than normal. And you have to make the sound really clear. Then you'll get the laugh. Oh, that's a really top tip, actually. One thing about sound, though, which we haven't said, if you're filming outside, there's often so much ambient noise that you're not quite close enough. And I use a little clip-on microphone, and that plugs into the phone. They're super cheap, and they're not expensive at all, but the sound quality is so much better than being a metre away or half a metre away from the phone, and then you end up with all the extra sound. But if you get the sound close, then I think that would hugely help. So I would say invest in a tiny little clip-on mic. Yeah, what about if you're in your own home just doing a quick video on how to put your makeup on or something? Um, do you need I do a it? lot of those, yeah. I know, <laughs> I know. Your makeup... Stop it, stop it. Your makeup cupboard's bigger than mine. Just let's not go there. I believe you just said. One day, yeah, but I'm an actor, so you have. Let's not go there, Robin. (laughs) You have Um, all those things. But if you're doing a little video at home, do you Mm. typically put on a lapel mic? Well, use the mic on the phone, but but actually, the lapel mic is better. Right. Even then, it is better. But sometimes you don't want to look as if you have a microphone on. So I would wear a dark shirt if I wanted to clip a microphone on, for example. (gasps) It's getting complicated Uh, now. I know this is getting complicated. All right, then finally, using text across the video. You mean like a transcription of what's yeah. been said? Well, yeah. transcription's good because some people watch in offices with the sound off and then at least you can read it, oh, yeah, which yeah, is of nice. Yeah. And you can have one word. You know, you can, if I was talking about voice, for example, I could just have the word voice across the bottom mm. whilst I was explaining the voice. And then when I move to another subject, like body language, you have body language there. So that can help focus. But that's rather the equivalent almost of having a PowerPoint slide, isn't it? You have your key words there. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. That's all those sort of bits and pieces out of the way. Do you know what I mean? We have to get on to this killer question. Do you practice? Do you practice even for a social media video? Do you practice? Well, I try and do it in one take. So I think about what I want to say and I have a go at what I want to say and then I film it once. Okay. And if there are mistakes, in, I leave the mistakes in because the mistakes actually make it sound natural. Mm. Does it make any difference if it's a 10-second video, a two-minute video... A five-minute video. 
Well, the structure of a video, and it's like the structure of a short story and the structure of a novel, overall is not that different in a sense. You still have to have a beginning, middle and end. So it has to have that flow. And I think if it's really short, then it needs to be snappy, obviously. So Um, one idea. So one idea. Right. What I would do, I think, if I was working with a client on this, I'd say, what do you want the viewer to take away at the end of this? In a sense, why are you doing the video? So decide that right at the top. Before you even do anything. And that will probably inform whether it's under a minute or whether it's actually a little bit more detailed. Right. I remember making videos in certain jobs that I've been in and the intention of them was various. One was to put it on the SharePoint. The internal intranet. Yeah. yeah. And what that was, was anybody new joining the firm had to listen to me Mm. talk 20 minutes about compliance. Can you believe how boring that was? In your defense, I did watch it actually. It wasn't that different. No, but it's helpful because you have to know, you know, the culture of the company and and how things work. And so that was watched over and over again for years, actually. Mm. We didn't have to change the content until the laws changed. I see what you mean. There has to be a decision about why you're making the video. Yes. But in your particular case there, there's a danger here. We turn into a teacher if we're not careful. Yes. Now, that's fine because in a sense you are teaching them. Follow these rules. And this Follow is these rules. But even within that, there's a way of sounding like an annoying teacher or mm. somebody who's actually being helpful. Right. Am I showing you this video to say, if you don't follow this, you will be in trouble? Or am I giving you this video saying... Do you know what? Here are some helpful things that might keep you safe. So it's a kind of mindset thing. Helpful I think. things I think that's to helpful. keep you safe is probably best on all videos. Well, it, it is really, and of course, yeah. that mindset is going to make you speak in a slightly different way, and the tone will be different, and therefore it will sound less condescending. Yeah, oh, that's really good advice. I wish I'd had that actually before I made that video, because now it's there forever. I, I don't know, even think they've changed it now that I've left the firm, but they still leave me up there <laughs> saying it. But there's been other videos that I've done which are much softer in their tone, mm. and they're much more about introducing the firm. You know, you normally need a video to say, yeah. what do we do? Well, Welcome, well, and why yeah. would you be interested in yeah. knowing us? And this is what we hope to build over the course of many years. Yeah. It saves a lot of explanation, and yes. you can just keep playing it if you have a roadshow. Mm. So you play that... And you can yeah. have the leader, maybe the CEO, can actually say, this is what we stand for and this is how it is. And exactly. This is oh, my no, team. But then, then you often have sort of cutaways to some of the employees and, and a picture of what you do and what your yeah. product is and all that kind of thing. And interns and graduates and everything. So everybody has a chance. Everybody to has yes. a chance. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, wrap it up with some great music. Yeah. Actually, we didn't talk about music. <laughs> do you... Simply the best. Yeah. But if you are doing a short social media video... And you're teaching people about how to do this. Mm. Do you ever talk about the overlay of music? Well, generally, I think music sounds a bit cheesy. It sounds a bit corporate because the kind of music you can use with no copyright Mm. is probably going to be a bit dingly, dingly, dingly lift music, sort of corporate music. Yeah. And I think cheapens it in a way. Yeah. Much better to have a natural acoustic of traffic noise around you or bird song or whatever it is as normal yeah. sounds. I think it's better. Now, if you're doing almost like a commercial for the website of the, of the company, a kind of statement of this is who we are, then of course you can have rousing music and that's all fine. But yeah. the production values are different for that. Okay. So you're basically saying make sure you know why you're doing it and yes. have a memorable point. Yes. And We always should put ourselves in the mindset of the person watching it. So, for example, if it's your first day at work and you're nervous and you're going to watch this video saying this is compliance or whatever, we have to understand that the people watching it are in a kind of nervous state. So rather like an airline pilot who says it's all calm, it's all fine, we know what we're doing, we want to feel nice and reassured and, you know, we've made a right choice. And actually, I've worked a lot in companies with this on the first day. Their biggest thing is, have I made the right decision to take this job? Mm. So part of the videos is about reassurance, but they don't often put that reassurance in there. They just go straight into this is what you need to know. But actually, part of that welcome video is a reassurance. Yeah. So now we've decided what the memorable point is or the Mm. intention of the video. Mm. How do you start? Just give me the basics here. How do you start? It's the same, to be honest. It's exactly the same as making a speech. When you're making a video, you start saying something in the hope that they'll listen to the next sentence. So Mm. you're trying to grab them in. Mm. And there are five essential ways to start a video or a presentation or a talk or anything. These are the five ways. The first is the benefit. And the benefit is what salespeople would use. By watching this video, you'll learn this. There's a benefit to watching it. The second one is a question which gets you thinking. Why is the world in this way? Why does this happen? Mm -hmm. You go, yeah, why does that happen? And it kind of makes you... So now you're you're in I've wondered that too, Mm -hmm. yes. The next one is a statement that you agree or disagree with. Since COVID, communication has changed. You can agree or disagree, but it gets you thinking again. Mm. So there's the, the benefit, the question, the statement. The shock is the next one. And the shock really 
is a call to action. If we don't sign this deal by Thursday, we're toast. Or it could be on a social media channel, unless you do something about this now. Look what's happening in our community. Exactly. So there's a call to action. The benefit, the question, the statement, the shock. And the last one is the story, which has a nice energy to it, actually, on Mm. videos. So my phone rang this morning at seven o'clock. You never know who was on the end of the phone. You see, that's the one that I will just keep listening. It's very natural, isn't it? It's super Particularly natural. on short form video. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's also, what we haven't talked about yet is whether you have movement in the video or not, whether you're sitting at a desk talking mm. or sitting in a park bench or something or whether you're walking down the road, or driving you in your car or, or whatever. Well, it depends on the subject matter. On the short form social media video stuff, I think if you're walking down the street, there's movement in the way you're holding the camera. It moves up and down naturally because you're walking. And it feels very unstaged. It's not like having a steady cam or something. And it's so popular. And you go, do you know what happened this morning? I was on the bus and they're talking to somebody. And they're telling you this now because it's just happened. Mm. So there's a bit of immediacy about it. So mm. that's, I think, the kind of video where you do want to Oh, I tell you why people do it. Because they want to share. They've been thinking about this. It just happened. Or it's a beautiful day and I want to share it with you or whatever. Mm. It's about sharing. You're right. It's, it's, about, a, it's about a relationship you're building mm. with the viewer yes okay so now you've decided which one of these five things or a mixture of these things Mm. that you want to anchor Mm. the video in but what about that first sentence i mean in the story version i think it's quite obvious so there i was so So there i was yeah yeah, so i was five years old and so how do you get that first sentence how do you get that inspiration and i suppose before you switch on the recording device did i just say that did i just say (laughs) that recording device recording device (laughs) you switch on yes. your recording device yes. do you already know your first sentence think, actually do you already know your script for the whole thing no i don't think you have to know the whole script you have to know your point but you do have to know your first sentence okay. the first sentence is going to grab people so whether you're using the benefit the question the statement the shock the story you know your first sentence but the really key thing for the first sentence i think is that it shouldn't have any formal words in it it's the same as making a speech actually It should be no corporate jargon in it, nothing. Even if you're the CEO and you're speaking to the team, it's got to be very, very natural, the first Mm. sentence. Because then Mm. you think, okay, I'm not going to be talked down to. Can you give me an example just to unpack that? What do you mean by natural words and not corporate words? I'm putting them on the spot Mm. here. Can you just chuck out a couple of lines that sound natural to you and sound too corporate to you? Okay, so here's the corporate version. Good morning. Thank you for watching. I'd like to tell you our objectives and our um, strategy for the next uh, quarter. And this will relate uh, particularly in the terms of teams and the structure within our organisation. I mean, I want to shoot myself now, frankly, because I don't know where this is going. So how would you say that more naturally? But more naturally, if you said, I've been thinking about where we're going with this company and I've got a couple of ideas. Oh, you see. I mean, it's it's chalk and cheese. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. I got it. Okay. Yeah. So when you've ever had to do a video, Sian, what's going through your mind just before you start? Actually, I think what's going through my mind is, is my hair in the right place? Is my voice going to come across well? Mm. I'm not actually thinking about the words. Right. I'm usually... Or the pre- content. Uh, no, I'm pretty comfortable. You, you get, thought about the content. Yeah, yeah I yeah. thought about the content and mm. actually... I pretty much know what I'm talking about. I mean, I would never make a video about something I didn't know about. So I'm already quite confident about the content. But I'm usually having a complete crisis about the fact that this is being imprinted on a video that's going to be available and probably escape into the public domain because normally they do. They do, yes. Yeah. That's I, a human thing, isn't it? I, it's I want a human to make sure thing. I look okay. And that's it's a human enough. thing. And even actually now when you Google me, videos come up from way back that mm. I didn't even know someone was videoing me. Yes, that's true. I, so I'm concerned about that. Last year we filmed a couple of promos for the podcast. Yeah. And we also filmed a couple of podcasts as well. I think it was the Frequently Asked Questions. It was Frequently Asked Questions. And so we had lots of bits that we could use, obviously, Mm. and it was a sensible thing for us to do. But how did you feel in the filming of that? Actually, it was the first time I've ever done anything like that. Mm. And can I say to anybody out there who's going to do this, it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. But you made it look easy. You were very well, good. Well, no, it just was. It goes back to if you know what your intention is and why you're doing the video. Yeah. Actually, it was fine. I wasn't too worried about anything else. Mind you, we had a good crew. Yes. I think my most tricky moment was just, what do you do with a cup of coffee? Because they said you needed a mug or something to make it look informal, didn't you? <laughs> yes, so yes. I had a cup of coffee. I actually had coffee. And I thought, when do I sip it? Did or you, do did, I just did, leave it? I never picked mine up. Didn't you? No, Did no. you just let it go cold? Oh, I can't be doing it. No, no. Because it's another thing to think about. I leave it there as a prop. I didn't know. I did it. And actually, I should just say, by the way, one of the challenges a lot of my clients have 
is when they're senior and they're asked to do a video, the comms team come in, they set it all up, it's beautifully lit and everything, and they go, and five, four, three, two, one, <laughs> action. And then they freeze because they're yeah. not used to doing live television or live thing. Then I go to the camera team and I said, can you just, just start rolling now? And I chat to my clients and I go, so what's your first line? Whenever you're ready, just go for that. Oh, and they edit out the... And they edit out all the first bit. Right. Whereas that moment of now, really unhelpful. So if you're live streaming, do you do some jumping jacks beforehand and things like that and just warm up your voice? Because you are going to have to go straight into it on a live stream. Yes. The trouble with live streaming, and it's the same as live television or live radio, is that with adrenaline, we tend to go faster mm. and we tend to get subconscious overexcitement, which means we tend to sound a bit too manic mm. if we're not careful. What I would say if you're doing anything live is go slower than you think. Right. Okay. Just Good go advice. slower. Good yeah. advice. Okay. And then what are you doing with your voice? I mean, you're making a video. Is it different to making a speech on stage? What are you doing with your voice on the video? I would say one word is intimate. Why? Because you're talking to one person down the camera. Is you're that talking, what's to, happened? talking to one person. I've talked to lots of radio presenters who maybe run the breakfast show or whatever on, mm. on radio. And they have maybe they have five million listeners, you know. Mm. And I said, who are you talking to? They said, always one person. It's always right. one, person. one person. And they go, so are you in your kitchen this morning? Now, you can have toast or you can have cereal. What are you going to do? Yeah. And it, you're talking to one person. You're not going, hello, all you millions of people out in radio land. Because then you think, I don't feel special. Yeah. All videos really should be intimate because the microphone is quite close to you. Mm. You're probably in close up anyway. And therefore, the way we either lean in or the way we show emotion our, in show our emotion. face. Exactly. What about being happy or sad or... Well, I think don't act it because you're in close up and it'll show. Okay. But I think avoid being over serious because I think sometimes when people in corporate life are just giving information, it can just be a bit neutral. Right. And neutral doesn't really cut it. It doesn't have any emotional connection with it. Ah. Oh. Unless it's a very, very serious, tragic message... I think just keep the inner twinkle. We always talk about this. Mm. Have a little inner twinkle in your eye as if I'm happy to share this information with you. Exactly. And I'm happy to be doing this video. And this is yeah. interesting information that I'm sharing yeah. with you. And yeah. we can use active words like, I'd like to tell you about this morning. Mm -hmm. rather than, I've been instructed to tell you about this. You know, <laughs> it's not as good as, do you know, I'd love to tell you about this this morning. Yeah. And I think there's a kind of softness. We can afford to be really natural. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was coaching the auctioneers from one of the big auction houses in the world. And I always said to them, look, one thing you don't have to do is to act authority because you're in the rostrum, you have the gavel, you're in charge, you have the microphone. So you don't have to act any authority at all. Oh, it's the same in a video. You're in charge. Well, you're in charge. But also if you're the CEO, for example, and you're giving your message, you don't have to act any authority because everyone knows who you are. And mm -hmm. it probably says CEO underneath and whatever. So you don't mm -hmm. have to do all that. What we want to do, though, is to say, I might be up in the rostrum. I might have all the power. I might be the CEO. But actually, I couldn't run this company without you. We're all in mm. this together. And mm. there's a mutual respect. And that comes from intimacy with the voice. And then finally, how do you think it's best to end a video? I know that's a really wide question, Robin. Actually. No, it's a, it's a very no, simple question. It, it's well, a good question. Is it? Yeah. Oh, well, it seemed pretty useless to me. But, but anyway, <laughs> no, it's a very good question. How do you question. end a video? You don't want to get to the end of the... So those are my thoughts, really. And I hope that and, um, um, you find yeah. them interesting. And, and maybe and, um, whatever you... Have a, have a nice day. And, uh, and, and I'll talk to you soon. And yeah, I think that was probably helpful. It's, this is rambling. Okay, so we don't, don't ramble. Don't ramble. Don't let it peter out. So ultimately, we want to start well and subtly conclude, I told this story because... Are we using your headline sandwich then? Start and finish with the same start thing. Me, even if it's a 30-second video. I think so, yeah. Because it's probably the same as a speech. You have to say it more than once for people to hear you. Yes, you do. Oh, but, but they can play the video again. <laughs> mm, they may do. They may, they may do. They probably won't. Yeah. But I think what they want to do at the end is they want to know, why was I listening to that? And just make it easy for them. Just tell them. Yeah. So this has been fascinating. And I don't think, actually, we've covered it all. Because it looks like on the technical side and on the content side, we could talk about a lot more mm. in terms of making the most impactful video, the one that has the most shares, the video that goes viral. But does it want to look impactful or does it want to look well, natural that's, that's what and I'm have thinking. impact? I think what you're saying is be natural and let the universe decide yes. whether it's good enough to be shared millions of times or it's good enough for your employees, or it's good enough yes. for the messaging for the company. Absolutely. You know, I've done lots of videos over the years, and one of them went viral. One of them went viral. And we never understood, me and the team, we never no, understood no, why. It was incredible. To me, it was no better, no different to all the other ones. And one suddenly went whoosh. <laughs> yeah. Why, why is that? So we don't really have much control. So over we don't that. really have much control. But I wasn't 
trying to think, right, I'm going to have one that's going to have massive impact and just going to take the world by storm. Because I think that would look like we're trying too hard. Mm. So I think the naturalness is the way forward. Isn't is it? It? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed that. There are lots of other fun episodes in this series. We'd love you to follow us, and you can contact us directly with any ideas you might have at robincommode.com.